Bob, does this red suit make me look fat? No, oh, not at all. Okay, darn. No! Oh, oh, oh. The following podcast contains graphic descriptions of international celebrating and global merrymaking. It may not be suitable for angry or unhappy audience members. Listener discretion is advised. You've been warned. Have you ever seen any of those foreign films? I don't like them. Some are born great, others achieve greatness, and some watch Christmas movies. We are the wild and pretty guys. But they're both festive, aren't they? And we are the festive foreign film fans. Hey, Mark. Bob, I'm so excited. Do you know what month it is? Mark, it's December. It is. (laughs) I can hardly contain myself. You know I'm under the calendar now with all the events and lots going on. Ton going on and it's, you know, I'm singing every day. (laughs) Sometimes I'm singing songs that make sense, sometimes not, but it's Christmas music always. Singing, dancing, eating, all of our favorite things. And Mark, please, can you turn down that uh, the, your ugly sweater? It the, the blinking is just distracting me. I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. Well, you know, I this is kind of a special episode because, and we would be remiss not to, to say this, but it is our good friend Liz Shu's birthday today. Happy Yay. birthday, Liz. <laughs> and Mark, as long as we've been on the air, Liz has said, Oh, I want to be, I want to be on the episode <laughs> for my birthday. But but Mark, um, as we know, uh, Liz is of uh, Greek ancestry and um she really wanted a Greek movie. And we do have a Greek movie coming, but I, we couldn't really do it uh tonight. And really because I made an effort and, you know, some people told me not to do this and I thought it was a good idea. So for December, tonight, we're going to focus on Russia. And then for our actual episode on the 25th, on Christmas, we're going to cover Ukraine. And obviously we all know about the war there. And uh, I just thought it would be kind of good to look at those two countries under this umbrella What do you think? I think it's a great idea, right? I mean, um, horrible things going there, going on in in Ukraine. Um, But what you know, what about the people, right? I mean, the people of Ukraine, the people of Russia. um, I I don't even know how to translate or put myself into either as a Russian citizen or Ukrainian. Like, what do I believe? What do I think about the holidays and so? So, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, one thing I'd call out though, like I'm not really good at math, yep. but if Liz's birthday <laughs> is today, if I take today and add two, isn't it your birthday then? <laughs> yes, Mark. It is my birthday in two days. <laughs> wow. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe at one of our breaks, Jake and I can sing you happy birthday. I think he may have brought you a big juicy chocolate beer. <laughs> Oh, I love that. <laughs> I thought I maybe tipped you off by this giant uh, birthday cake crown that I'm wearing. <laughs> or or your birthday suit, yeah. you know, one or the other. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm only following in line with our movies. Most That's of right. them involve some nudity, so come on. <laughs> Rare exports. <laughs> Retro. So, um, you know... Uh, Thinking about what you said about Ukraine and Russia, you know, I have been thinking about these episodes for a long time because I know early on when we first talked about this podcast and I thought, you know, I know you love Christmas. I love Christmas. We're enjoying it right now. But in the same vein, we've been talking about it for months and I was worried early on, like, would it affect the specialness of it? Would it? impact how we felt about the holiday. And what I've been really shocked by 
and it really leads into this discussion about these two episodes, mm -hmm. is the more of these movies that I have watched, and they are movies that, you know, we've seen a spectrum of different countries. We're trying to select countries that are all over the globe. Yeah. And it's fascinating in terms of how we as humans, not, you know, the, there are various, uh, you know, different customs, ways to celebrate all that. But when it comes to the human drama of yeah. these films, how much we have in common and what I have been shocked by when I think about this is in some ways it, it has even become, if you can believe it, more meaningful for oh, me yeah. because I just, you know, I sit back and I enjoy all the movies and I appreciate the differences and I also appreciate the similarities, but from a humanistic perspective, mm -hmm. I'm just like, it, it's almost I, I'm more sensitive to the fact that we we share this in common, the celebration, and not all of us, but we've gone to countries where they don't necessarily have the history or the rituals, but they do share yeah. elements of it. And it it's just, it's beyond what I ever anticipated when I started uh, this. Yeah, I, I think it's a great point. And, and maybe they don't have something they call Christmas. So especially, you know, if it's they're based on the Christian belief of Christmas, right. but they have an event that's around the same time of the year, whether it's uh, new year's or something that celebrates the time of year where there's maybe, maybe peace is tangible, right? Kindness is realistic. So, um, no, I think it's been a great journey. Yeah. And, and I, I think, as we'll see here, as we'll talk about, and we look at these two different areas that are now, you know, fighting each other, and you look at the movies and and what they share in common, and it it makes you just shake your head and say, this whole fighting over religion or geography or what, yeah. how just aimless and pointless it is, really. Well, you know, in the U.S. anyway, maybe it's popular outside the U.S., but, you know, the Ancestry.com or 23andMe, and, you know, as you go back and, and you trace it, right? I mean, my family has done it, but you have to imagine that in in Ukraine and in Russia, as they go back into their ancestry, like, there's probably a lot of people who, that mean, they probably share more culturally and and he probably even DNA wise, right? Then, like, why why would they be fighting with each other, right? Like, it's I know there's government, it's deeper than that, but I just think it's got to be, it's just got to be so strange, right? Because none of us know what it's like to have a war in our 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 in our country, right? No, I, and, and, and physical, like, and like you said, when you see the images and what these people mm -hmm. have to go through in their daily lives just yeah. to get by it's it's just heartbreaking yeah and it can be overwhelming i mean i have found myself just sitting there staring and wondering like my god what does it mean to have a, a hospital bombarded right neighborhoods devastated and it's um yeah it's i think it's a great idea that you have here to to look at um christmas uh from a russian film perspective ukrainian film perspective and Let's let them see what what they have in, in common and what they have uh, that are different. And one last point, I'm just curious. You know, a lot of the films that we watch, they they have a positive lift and they can lift our spirits. But it's difficult when we know that, like you said, that these people are engaged in warfare every single day, and and you know we're enjoying our yeah. festivities and going out and buying gifts and all that. What do what do you do to to stay positive and stay upbeat, you know, because sometimes, you know, we can wrap ourselves in the joy, which I try to do, but yeah. it can be difficult at times. I mean, without a doubt, right? I mean, just, you know, no expert here, but, you know, around the times, the holidays, right? There's, gosh, unfortunately, um, a lot of depression, suicides are up, right? Deaths are, <laughs> are, are December, January. So, I mean, 
I, I think I would break it down this way. One, I try to focus on the small stuff, right? The important stuff, the family, the friends, uh, right? The celebrations that are going on. Um, I don't try to hide behind. I still keep informed. So, you know, you don't want to hide away. You don't want to pretend like think bad things aren't happening, whether it's this country or or in Russia and, and, and Ukraine and uh, other other countries. You know, there's terrible famine in other countries. So, yeah. Yep. You know, I focus on the small stuff. I don't hide from the truth. Um, you know, uh, my dad used to always say, well, you know, son, if you bend down and put your head in the sand, you know, it's sticking up in the air, right? And getting kicked, right? And so. <laughs> I, I like that. You, you've come up with these <laughs> idioms from your mom and your dad. They're oh, awesome. Yeah. They're yeah. great. Yeah. And it's so true. Wilkes-Barre wisdom, I it think. It is. Wilkes-Barre is. That's funny. Yeah. One of my favorite ones is, is actually what he used to say when we wouldn't want to do something, right? It would be like, hey, can you go do whatever it is? And we'd say, oh, dad, I don't know how. And he'd be like, well, you're not going to learn any younger. <laughs> <laughs> and now all these years later, I still don't have a good retort for that. But, but anyway, you know, I, I think it's, I, I think it's, you know, you know, focus on the small stuff, stay informed, don't deny the truth, right? Help where you can help. Um, and just, I think just even acknowledging and saying out loud, I, I know soon I often say like, oh my God, like how could they bear this? What brave souls they are, you know, what, what, what they're facing and they're still in, you know, still probably celebrating Christmas. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's what I try to do and, and just, you know, hope, pray that something will, something good will come out of some of these events and hug our family. Oh yeah. Hug, you know, keep them close to us. Yeah. What about you? Are there anything that you do? (sighs) You know, I'm listening to what you and it, I'm processing it really. I, I do, you know, uh, especially when you think about the small things, the things that you can make a difference on. You try to stay positive every day. You try to spread positivity. Mm -hmm. Mary Ellen always says, if you think of a compliment, give it. Don't Mm -hmm. don't just say, oh, that the the person is aware of it. Pass it on. But uh, hey, should we talk about a movie? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, you want a Christmas movie? Christmas movies are our bread and butter. We eat Chinese food and watch Christmas movies. I heard it's the best Christmas movie since Home Alone. All right. So, Mark, tonight's film is a film called Silver Skates. Now, that's not the Russian name of it, but in in English, it's Silver Skates. And Matt V. Polakoff, he is the he's the uh, male lead in this film, and he is played by Fedor. Fedor, Fedotov. Now, again, I got to say, I'm going to stumble on these Russian names, but um, the great thing about Fedor, if you look into him, like this is his first film, which is pretty amazing because he yeah. does such a wonderful job. Unknown, he was a ice hockey player. There is a lot of skating in this film. There is. There's a lot of skating and a lot of really cool stunts. And this guy did them pretty much himself, amazing. which... You know, going back and watching it a second time, I'm like, wow, very, very impressive. And our female lead, and these are the two romantic leads, we have Alisa Vyasemskaya. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, that's her name in the movie. I'm sorry. That's, right. yeah, that's, that's Alisa. Name. Yeah, she's yeah. Alice. She's Alice in the movie. Alice. Sonia Press. Sonia Press. Sonia Press. So she's um, she was also relatively unknown when she appeared Um born in Russia, but speaks fluent English. And there are some parts in it. She has a, um, like a, a tutor, right? Tutor, a tutor yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Who they speak English to each other. So there are parts where they speak English. Um, so she is actually going to be in an English la- language, Russian science fiction movie this year called Forgotten Experiment. Oh, interesting. She's very, very pretty. Yep. Very good actress. Very good actress. Um, and, you know, it, it was hard to pick out, you know, who else would we identify because you have Alice yeah. and her family, her father and her mother, her stepmother. It's her mm-hmm. stepmother. You have uh, the the uh, general that she's going to be uh, married to. Yep. But uh, the one I did pick out was Yuri Basak- Borisov, who plays Alexei Tarasov. And Alexei, Alex, is, um, as we talk about the film, um, he becomes 
uh, uh, Matfi goes to work with him. He he run, he's right. like a Fagin. He has a bunch of pickpockets That's that right. he is in in charge of, and he's really interesting because he's kind of uh, a foil in this movie. But he also there's a lot of class issues that come through in this film, and and maybe it's because of the Russian communist influence. But there's a lot of discussion, and and it goes through the whole film. So um, now he's a popular actor who uh, GQ Russia GQ Russia picked him the actor of the year in 2020. He hasn't um, he uh, hasn't appeared in any English language films. Although a few of his Russian films have been distributed here in the U.S. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So you have, yeah, you have more the peasant class versus the the uh, aristocracy, the yeah. uh, bourgeoisie that they would call. You also had old versus new. So right. uh, Matt V's father is a lamplighter. And he's like, why don't you be a lamplighter? And you can see electricity is starting to come in. And they're like... Soon you're going to be replaced with electricity. And he has kind of what you would say maybe old world values versus new world values. You have um, Alice and her father. Alice wants to study uh, uh, science. And at this time in Russia, you can't even go to university without either your husband approving it or your Your father father approving it. So, you know, so that's like science versus her stepmother is her stepmother is really into occultism and has all these these weird presentations going on there. So there's that rub, too. So there's a lot of layers, I thought, in this. I, I agree. I would say they put the finer point or better light on the arguments that for, you know, the rising up of the peasant class against the aristocracy. However, there are elements where they say, I think at one point someone says, you're just going to take one group and replace it with another group. And you know what I mean? Then I thought, wow, that's pretty forward thinking. I thought, and to your point, maybe this is just the, the way that we've grown up and come to view right. Russia right? versus how Russia is in 2023. Yeah. I mean, even the scenery with, the, I, 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 we're after, I'm assuming that was filmed in Russia. I didn't yes. actually check, you know, um, gorgeous. Oh right? my gosh. St. Petersburg. Gorgeous. I, I mean, like you said, we'll start talking about it. It starts. So, um, Matt V is a, he, uh, is a skate, he's a courier on skates mm-hmm. and for a baking shop. And he, uh, he's the fastest skater. And what is so, when you first talk about like amazing thing, all the commerce that happens on the frozen river, yeah, they have stands, they have, it's, it's a, it's active, like way that people would, are, are moving around on this, on skates, on the river. Um, he's going to, he, he's supposed to be the fastest one to make a fast delivery to this important client. And the road gets blocked off by the, this would be Alice's father, who's a count. Right. Right. And blocks to let him pass. Like they block all of the traffic to let him pass. So Maffy loses his job. At the same time, he loses his job. His um, father has advanced tuberculosis, needs uh, special treatment in Germany, very costly. So he's in a desperate situation. But like you just said, so the the river, the frozen river, and then how about the buildings and the yeah. scenery? Oh my gosh, this place is beautiful. Yeah, and and this is where you do see elements of Christmas in the movie. Now I would say it's not a heavily uh, uh, Christmas movie. Right. There, Christmas is in it, um, and someone might say, well, it's more of a Christmas adjacent film, and that might be when we talk about what happened to Christmas in Russia, but. Um, but there are elements, you see trees, you see decorations and what you kind of see too, which is kind of cool is that this is taking place in, in Christmas of 1899. So it's going to turn into 1900 and they have a big lit up 1900. Um, so Maffy gets, uh, uh, fired, uh, at the same time we're learning about Alice and her desire to, um, be a scientist and how she's stopped at every point. Her father thinks it's ridiculous for women to want to study. And uh, so Matfee falls into this group of pickpockets 
and he is desperate. And this is where you start to get into some of these arguments about, hey, they've been stealing from us forever. Right. You know, it's only our turn to go back and steal from them. And it, so really kind of give him a moral way to support what he's doing when he goes to learn to steal from these yeah, it gives you somebody, I mean, it's it's funny, right? With a lot of movies, you find yourself cheering then for, you know, the true, the criminal, right? Oh, yeah. The, the person who's stealing from others, right? But he's still the hero of the film because who he's, whether it's a Robin Hood or Matt V, you know, <laughs> stealing things on his skate. And, and just not to lose that point on the, just the class. So, I mean, they call them usurpers. They call them the ruling class, aristocracy, that they're oppressing us. And even there's a dialogue between Alice and Maffey because she understands, realizes he's stealing from people at, a, at an ice ball that right. they go to. So she says, look, I won't turn you in if you come with me the next day. And what she wanted him to play her husband right. and to represent her. And so she could get into these classes at the university. Well, what she didn't realize is that he needs to write a statement that he approves of this and he doesn't know how to write. Right. So she can't go. She's angry. She's leaving, you know, kind of a, kind of a, to stick it to him, gives him her earrings and says, here, that's your payment. You know, you know, like this, you came along with me just to, um, you know, for payment. And he's like, you know, obviously you can tell he really likes her. Right. And uh, he's like, and she's leaving and he's chases after her carriage and is like, Hey, you don't know what it's like. I was born in the dirt. And, you know, she kind of is, isn't coming around at first. Like, you know, Hey, yeah. you know, I, I've had a tough life too, kind of. And right. he's like, but what I what was such an interesting conversation where he's like, who built, and she lives in this, you know, it's like a castle. And he's like, who built your house? And she's like, my grandfather did. And he said, yeah, and how many bond slaves did he have? And I don't even know what a bond slave is. And she's like 10,000. Right. <laughs> so that's what I think opens her eyes to. Right. <laughs> so her stepmother is like, you know, she's she's being openly rude to you, to the um, minister, to the minister of the czar. She's being rude to you. We got to marry her off, essentially. So they identify this um, captain of the guard who they want her to to end up with. And what I what I did like about this film is they didn't necessarily portray him as a, a completely bad guy. No, no. He's open minded. He's liberal. In fact. If you saw him in some ways, you put Matt V next to him, you'd almost think he would be the romantic lead. He's much more, you know, statuesque. And, yeah. But she doesn't seem all that thrilled with him. And the one thing he does, there is a conversation he has with another guy where he's like, it's kind of a commercial transaction. He's like, she's, you know, the, the, uh, uh, what is, uh, the minister, the minister is rich. Yeah. She's, a, you know, he has a lot of connections, marry his daughter, you'll get all the connections. Now, when he's with her, he doesn't display that, but you've heard him say it. So he's the captain of the guard. So he realizes that these thieves are on the ice. And so he, he proposes that they develop this, uh, uh, like a, a, a gang of cops to go after them on skates and they've developed. So he clearly is now set up to be, he's against Matt V and yeah. Alex and, Another, when you talk about um, the differences, the comparisons, so you look at when Alice goes to the events that her family goes to, they're very uh, formal, right. staid, you know, they don't look very fun, <laughs> you know, and in fact, at one point someone says, Oh, you know, he has this lavish and he's just like, oh, it's, it's nothing, you know, yeah. welcome to my little party or whatever. When she goes with Matt V and they go to the bar or on Christmas Eve, there's a circus kind of a, or like almost a freak show kind of thing, much more colorful, fun, right. exciting people dancing, people having fun. So again, formal people are boring and stiff. The, the, the peasants are having a great time. They were having a with what they time. can, you know. Um, so anyway, uh, Matthew fights with his father. His father realizes he's making all this money, lost his job. He realizes that he is—he's obviously doing it. Um, he's stealing it, right? 
And Matthew tries to argue with his father the same way that Alex says to him, like, hey, you know, they're, they don't need it. We need it. You need it. You know, so he has no problem stealing. And the father's like, only bad things can come from this. Just, you know, won't take it and throws it on the ground. And then Matthew leaves and he's on the boat with thieves. And um, she... The boat is their headquarters. Oh, yes. Right? It's, it's a frozen boat. I should yeah. say it's like, it's actually kind of a sunken right. wreck, but it's frozen in the ice. So that's where they sleep. That's where they live. And it's far enough away that nobody knows that they're there. And that's... Um, so that's where Matthew goes to to stay. And while he's there, after he's fought with his father, Alice um, gets there. Her stepmother's having this like uh, occultist type presentation with a magician, and she's able to show him up um, in front of the whole crowd based on science. She understands how he's doing the trick, blows it up. Um, everyone gets upset. The father gets upset. He burns all her books, all her science books, and says, you're done. You're done with this education. You're not going to do this. So she's crushed. Matt B., you know, goes back to find his father and finds out that his father has died. So his father's died. He's crushed. She's crushed. Um, she comes out to find him, find Matt V. She wants to run away to France to study because France in France – Women can study. They don't need any approval. They can go to school. And um, they're planning to do it right when the captain of the guard comes. They have captured one of the gang members, beat him up, found out where they're living. They surround the boat, set the boat on fire. Um, and then Alex realizes he can use um, Alice as a hostage to get a, you know, everyone released. So there's all the tension in terms of he's got her. He's like, you know, cause they've captured all of his gang. He's like, let him go, you know? And he's like, and how do I know that you, you're going to let them free? And he's like, you have the, uh, you have my, <laughs> as a, as a captain yeah. of the guard, <laughs> you know, you have my captain's word. So of course, um, when they try to, when they get, uh, Alice back, he sends his people to go back and get the gang. Um, Alex gets shot, but Maffey gets away. You know, he jumps in the water and gets away, although nearly he's killed by the water. They, um, he decides to find, now Alice thinks he's, I think she thinks he's dead. That's right. Yeah. Yep. The boat burned. Um, so she thinks he's gone. She's depressed. Her parents are now like, you ran away. You, um, you know, you did the whole thing with the magician. We're going to just kind of get, sell you off to the captain of the guard. Like, hey, hey, we're going to marry you. You're you're gone now. And she's walking around like a zombie. She's like yeah. not saying anything. She's not happy. Um, Matt V sneaks, finds out where they're going. It's her engagement party. It's right. a masquerade engagement party. He sneaks in. Finds her. She's shocked that he's still alive. He's like, look, I got two tickets to France. Let's go. They rush out uh, on the river mm -hmm. again. <laughs> beautiful, more skating, more beautiful night skating. Yep. Fireworks are going off because it's New Year's. Um, Captain of the Guard comes after him on a white horse, chases him down to the, to the railway. Uh, there's a tussle. Yeah. She, you know, he knows that they're going to the railway because he found the ticket. Matt V dropped one of the tickets. So he gives the ticket to Alice, get on the train, go, go to France. And I'll go buy another one knowing that he's going to have to go fight the captain of the guard. And it's probably not going to meet her. And she takes off to France. And I think that's where we'll leave it. What do you think? I think so. I think it's a good, yeah. I think there's, I like the, there's still enough for you to watch um, or for our fans to watch um, that you've left yeah. unanswered. Yep. Um, I think there was, you know, the one part I would say that was really kind of fun is, you know, um, was the chase scene, right? Lots of car chase scenes. This one was on ice oh. and ice skaters and skating after one another. <laughs> and like, it was like at points in time, like a good movie is you go through different things. You go through different emotions of, you know, this tension between lovers, tension between parents, um, a fight scene, a chase scene, but this, this one being on ice, the stunts were phenomenal. Oh, and Mark, I had some notes I, I forgot I wanted to highlight. 
it re- there were parts of it that reminded you of the matrix and there are parts of you that remind oh, you of home yeah. alone yeah. <laughs> like when he throws the ornament yeah. it is that chase scene and and you can see you know it was he was doing those stunts really phenomenal and i agree with you that got you pumped up watching that the chase on ice yeah very much so okay so you know uh kind of highlighted there were some christmas in not a lot what do you think is it fa- is it a christmas movie mm-hmm. I, you know i yes it is my short answer i feel like it had it felt like christmas right to me it felt like because of, of all the lights decorations and we'll talk about some of the traditions up but just from the standpoint of it's a love story at christmas time right it has all the elements of um the festivities going on um, so yeah, I would consider it. What about you? I, I'm glad you said that. Cause I kind of thought the same thing, even though they're in the, a lot of times in the background, there are some beautiful trees. The city, as we've said, looks stunning. There was a scene on the ice where remember they're dressed up. They're almost like mummers or something and they're on Christmas day. And they're dressed like, yes. you know, goats or whatever. And that, and all of it, the little elements, some of the things that I think I could pick up on now because of some of the movies that we watched, that was really fun to see. Yeah, agreed. Um, how'd you feel at the end of the movie? Um, I felt I felt um, sad mm-hmm. um, a little bit um, because of the sort of the what happens with the love interest and the parents and stuff like that. I mean, I, I think I from so the emotion related to the movie was sad. I thought it was, and we'll get into this. I thought it was a really good movie, though. Like I was like, wow. I am. That was that movie went really, really fast for me. I I agree with it. Like my thought was, it was a great ride, an enjoyable yeah. ride, and a lot of different elements that you just didn't see coming that made up, and it just made it for very fun, enjoyable film. Yeah, agreed. So I'd say you know, well, I've already I've watched it twice, and I could see watching it again in the future. It's I loved just looking at St. Petersburg. <laughs> well, you know, it, it. so along the way, along our journey, right, we're, um, since we started in, in back, whenever that was, seven months ago, <laughs> um, like the, this was a high quality movie. Like this was, as you know, so if Hollywood is our, our, our testing ground, like this was a very high quality Hollywood-like movie with great sound, great editing, great cinematography, great stunts and so um yeah i would definitely watch this this movie again and that's what's stunning when you think the two leads are like virtual unknowns this is like their first film right. and it's it's amazing to think that um so uh you would watch it again and would you recommend it to someone i would yeah i think i would i think it would be um i'd say yeah i would recommend it to someone who likes that type of film right mm-hmm. um you know I would say if if I had any Russian friends, um, I would recommend to them especially because I, I you know I be, I would love to watch it with them to get their per, their perspective on the cultural things that you and I have been commenting. Yes, on. that I would like to because you don't know if it's filtered through now the 21st century right. or were they talking that way in the 20th century? Right. Is this how it is today? It would, that, that I'd love to see. But the other reason why I would recommend some, especially someone that appreciates history, right. very historical there. I thought very accurate, the buildings, the, you know, so anyone that appreciates history, you'd like look around. And I think they really did a good job of the, the stalls and what the people are doing and all yes. that were all reflective of the time, which has made it much more, even just the visuals are right. engaging. Agreed. Good. Good. Good point. Okay. So this is one swallow hard. I am going <laughs> to get my, <laughs> I'm rolling my, whatever I need to, because I got to <laughs> teach you how to say Merry Christmas in Russian, which is Pazdriniam. Irish just from bum <laughs> that I just <laughs> slaughtered that I the way that they say it it rolls off the tongue and I can't pause pause Pazdrainayam? Irish just from okay I you know what I mean I I think it is I think the Eastern European language is really hard to do um and so I I 
I'm not going to even try. <laughs> but don't you love, you're right, it's hard to, but I love to listen to them do it. So we apologize to any Russian listener out there. We, we just offended you, I know it. But the one thing that's kind of interesting is what to translate, like what they're actually saying. What they're saying is, congratulations on the birth of Christ with Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why it's so long. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that because a lot of times you live in foreign countries, it's like they ba- basically say happy Christmas right. or congratulations Christmas. This one is a, a longer one, but it's like, hey, congratulations on the birth of Christ with Christmas. <laughs> well, I, I really, for those who are watching, if you haven't seen already, you know, on the day we release, we post things on Facebook where you can actually listen to the actual translation. So yeah, please do that (laughs) because you will not have heard it on this show. (laughs) All right. Now uh, let's talk about some Christmas customs in Russia. And probably the biggest one to talk about is Russia, especially pre the Bolshevik revolution at the time, like this movie is occurring, uh, Christmas was a big deal. They had giant balls. They had big parties and all that. Well, the, you know, the, the revolution came in and they abolished all the Christian tradition of, of celebrating the birth of Christ. Um, what they kind of did is, and I think it was a way to maybe make it more palatable for the masses, is they made the New Year's a big celebration. Right. And they borrowed a lot of the, the Christ, Christmas traditions that they had previous and now made them traditions for New Year's because that was secular. It wasn't related to religion. Right. The engagement party is a masquerade one that they said, they called it a masquerade ball. That was very common, masquerade yeah. balls around Christmas time. And I, you just love it when you can see where they borrowed some of the traditions. So the gifts are left for children under the New Year's tree. Right. And the tree is not decorated with a a star of Bethlehem, but it's a star of socialism that was used by Stalin. Um, they do, they decorate the rooms and that, but they don't have outdoor lights. So, so they tried to, you know, they made it a state holiday and not a religious holiday. Now the Russian Orthodox church, they observe the Julian calendar. So their Christmas is on January 7th instead of the uh, December 25th. Um, so if you think about that, if Christmas was on January 7th, New Year's would come first. Right. So In their mind, that's why, in some ways, another reason why New Year's is a bigger celebration, because it's the first one. Yeah, that's interesting. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, so those who do follow the Russian Orthodox Church, who did celebrate Christmas or continue to celebrate Christmas, it was a much more low-key, no presence, um, um, you know, like it went from pre-Bolshevik Revolution they had a 12 day period <laughs> that they had these <laughs> lavish parties and they called it Christmas tide and it was a big deal. And then they went to the very low key. Um, now you'd say, well, wait a minute. So if they don't have Christmas, they don't have Santa Claus, but no, they, they do. do. And um, he, he is called uh, Zed Moros, Zed Moros, which is grandfather frost. They're, uh, Grandfather Frost, he's tall and thin. He has a long, he looks like more like a wizard. And um, he has a staff that he uses uh, that helps him to walk across the snow, snow drifts. Blue and white rope, you know what I mean? Frost. Right. Like, so those are the colors. And again, he comes on New Year's, doesn't come down the chimney, just comes to the door. <laughs> and um, there is a story of the snow maiden who is his granddaughter and that she oftentimes will be with him. And her name is Snigarochka. Snigarochka. Snigar- See, I did better on that one. Snigarochka. You, you had that good throat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that is, so it's, you know, you love that. And I would imagine that um, with the fall of the Soviet Union, there's probably more, uh, Christmas elements now, right. I would imagine, than, than, than if there had even been in the past. But still, it's not anywhere near what New Year's is. Right. Yeah, it was, it's interesting that they... I, I really liked your point about New Year's being first and maybe drumping the <laughs> Christmas time. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, 
And now this is fun because you're like, well, wait a minute. If they don't celebrate Christmas, how do they have Christmas music? Well, they do. You ready for Christmas music? I am. This calls for some Christmas music. Yes, this Christmas music. What kind of Christmas music is that? The least you could do is play some Christmas music. And now back to Christmas music. So, you know, obviously they, they didn't celebrate, <laughs> didn't celebrate Christmas for 70 years. So right. most Russians aren't, you know, familiar, but... And they, they took the uh, music, adapted it for New Year's, which includes a song. But there is a song, a Christmas song, that goes all the way back to the Tsarist times. And it's called A Christmas Tree Was Born in the Forest. Oh. It's based on a poem, and it's from 1905. But as you see, it's this is a modern interpretation by a Russian pop artist, and she covers a lot of Western songs. So, and she purposely wanted it to be Christmas because if you watch the video, there's a Santa Claus in the video. But listen to this: this does not sound like a 1905 poem, as you can see. <laughs> So you can see that it's like the, it's clearly intended for Christmas. Video has a Christmas tree. Um, and Ami, she's the singer. She's wearing reindeer antlers and her guitarist is dressed like Santa Claus. So it's it's a Christmas song from 1905. But sure doesn't sound like it, does it? No, not at all. <laughs> I, I, you know, in fact, if you would have told me that's the time, I would never guess it. Yeah. That's just, that's very interesting. I, I, I liked it though. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it led to tonight's question thinking about, okay, so the Russians said, you know what, we're going to ban Christmas, but we can't really get rid of the whole thing. So let's just kind of say, oh, it's all New Year stuff now, right? So, <laughs> hey, by the way, that Christmas stuff, no, 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 we really meant that for New Year's. But then I started thinking, so um, is there like, if we wanted to borrow elements from other holidays, or you could even other countries if you wanted to, but other holidays to make part of the Christmas celebration. Is there anything that you could think of? Wow. That's a really good question. Um, so top of my head, let's see. Uh, Nikit Santa elves. No. <laughs> uh, Anna's uh, knife or thinking that stabs people and zombies. No, no. And I'll see you know, you know, so I'll say it in French to see if you, if my French has improved since we started. But I would love to, for us to have the tray de la confiseur. Was that the, oh, uh, it was the treaty. Or yeah. The, that's the, uh, yes. The treaty of the confectionaries. Yes. Yes. I mean, the tr- I, yeah, I think, you know, and again, to remind our listeners, that was back, I think, in almost maybe yeah. our first episode yeah. where it talked about in, in uh, France, they have a month where they put all politic discussions to the side. Oh, gosh, I'd love that. Right? I mean. You what, hit on it, Mark. That would what? be perfect. I Especially mean, right now. Exactly. Christmas time. That yeah. would be awesome. So that's that's <laughs> the, that's the one I would like to incorporate into our uh, into the American Christmas uh, celebration. As we go home and turn our TVs on and see all the ads bashing each other. But uh, the one I was trying to think of, like, another, another American, like, and I was like, okay, well, like, St. Patrick's Day, we dress in green. Maybe, we, maybe like your ugly sweater. What if like you, you had to wear like? Because you know, I like to wear festive clothes all day. But what if there was a day like, I don't know, Christmas Eve, everyone had to dress up, you know, like that. So everyone was kind of became a thing. Like they all would wear goofy Christmas stuff. I think that's a. I love that, right? Because you know what. <laughs> People will, I mean, you know, everybody wants to wear the sweater I have on right now. Yeah. And so I think- Especially if, lighting up like that. I just think if you had, if that was a mandate, I just think people would, would do it. Like, I think they would say, oh, well, I have to do this yeah, to go grudgingly, out. Grudgingly, right, grudging, yeah. You know, then deep inside they would do it. I like that idea yeah. a lot, Bob. So that's mine. So, well done. And, and uh, I know we're going long, but I'm going to leave you with this quote. 
And it's, and I, I'm trying to find quotes for these two episodes that really express what I'm thinking about and thinking about the people of Russia and Ukraine. It says, Christmas for me is not a time for presents, but a time for a genuine desire for goodness to flood the world and wash away its pains. Mm. Not by me, Greg Weiss, mm. but goodness to flood the world mm. and wash away the pains. I love it. Yeah, I, you know, I love it. And maybe using the the silver skates, the, the dad always told their son, told his son when he was skating, always look forward. So maybe we can always look forward. Always with those, look forward. With I like that. I, that. Yeah, you pulled right from the movie and it's repeated a couple of times. So you're right. Yeah. Always look forward. That's yeah. great. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Bob. And uh, happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> happy birthday to you. I've never seen your hips swivel like that. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> Actually, we're done. Done, done. It's over. Over, over. It's over. It's over. Kaput. Finito. It's over. It's over. It's over. This has been a Waysound Studio production. And sound engineering on our show is by Jake Fontana. <laughs> <laughs>